This is NDTV and you're watching NDTV 24-7. Hello and welcome. You're watching our special coronavirus call-in. This is where we take all your medical questions on COVID-19 over the next half hour. Our telephone line 8377-08837 goes live and you can call in with your questions. As always, we're joined by medical experts at the top of their profession. These are specialists particularly to help you deal with your conditions. Um, at this point when you might be worried about uh, contracting uh, COVID-19 and in case you do then the kind of help uh, that you might need is now at hand. Joining us this morning uh, Dr. Bharat Sharma he is an endocrinologist uh, in Surat, Dr. Surendra Kumar Sharma uh, also a specialist in uh, endocrinology and he joins us from the Galaxy Specialty Center in Jaipur. We're also joined by uh, Ram Dr. Ramesh Gudapati who is Chief of Cardiology at the Star Hospitals in Hyderabad. So our focus on this show really today is going to be about um, how uh, what precautions you need to take if you already have underlying conditions like diabetes and hypertension um, or if you've had sort of um, episodes, uh, um, cardiology related episodes in the past, what special precautions you need to take, how you need to manage your fitness levels better, how you can prepare yourself for uh, any kind of eventuality uh, if at all it comes to that so our numbers are going live but in the meantime i'd like to ask a few questions myself um of course the big question is you know people do ask us if they have diabetes or for that matter hypertension are they at greater risk for covid19 the answer to that seems to be yes um, but if um, uh, you'd like to help us with that. Let's begin with Dr. Gudapati. In fact, um, what is your advice uh, to anybody that you have treated uh, or who would approach you, Dr. Gudapati? Um, how best should they, uh, well, monitor their lives right now? Are there any extra precautions that they ought to be taking, the diet they should be following? How do they exercise in the middle of a lockdown? Anything you'd like to share with us? Yeah. Uh, generally, there are certain risk factors uh, which predispose to this coronary artery, uh, uh, corona uh, virus disease. Uh, so one of them is the age factor. If people who are beyond the age of 60 years or uh, people who have diabetes and then people uh, who are immunocompromised, these are the ones who catch the virus uh, more uh, frequently. So these are the people who have to be more careful. But as far as the hypertension goes or the heart problem goes, uh, they per se do not have an increased risk of uh, contracting the disease. But mm -hmm. however, if these people get the uh, coronavirus infection, they are likely to have uh, a more uh, negative outcomes uh, compared to the other uh, subset of uh, uh, people. So if uh, patients who have hypertension or people who have heart disease, they should continue to use their medications regularly. And right. then uh, these days with the lockdown in uh, place, I think they should try to exercise at home. These days there are a lot of apps which are available uh, on the web. Uh, mm -hmm. Maybe you can use one of them and then get into yoga or exercise. Uh, uh, so keep their physical activity up. So that will help in right. controlling this uh, lifestyle diseases. Uh, as well as uh, have a healthy diet which includes more of green leafy vegetables and uh, fruits. And uh, don't binge uh, because staying at home, the tendency is there always yeah. you know, to eat more. Yeah. So yeah. I think that's one area where we need to watch out. In fact, there's an interesting meme doing the rounds where someone has stuck a notice inside their fridges saying you're not hungry, you're just bored, close that door. And I think it's something that all of us are facing really, uh, you know, this need to continue eating out of boredom. So that's an important message going out. Dr. Surendra Kumar Sharma is also with us and, and, and he's a... Uh, we'll, we'll try and get him in, in just a moment. Um, we also have our first caller online. Uh, Krishan Kaushal uh, is uh, with us on, on the line from Noida. Uh, Krishan, go ahead. What's your question? Yeah, good morning, everybody. Yes, good morning. morning. Please please ask your question. I just want to ask the, uh, the symptoms of this, of, of, of this corona. 
Corona having is uh, this mild fever and the mild cough. What is yeah. the definition of the mild fever? How, how much? How, how uh, up to? Uh, what temperatures you are asking? Okay. Yeah, uh, and and how yes, and how frequent is the cough in 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 uh, yes. in our uh, that hours our time? Because it, it, yes. it is considered as a mild. Please. Okay, Doctor yeah. Bharat so Sharma, would you like to? Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Good morning. So uh, the question is whether uh, you, uh, there is any criteria for defining any fever or cough as mild. Mm -hmm. Usually, we consider any temperature above 100 degrees Fahrenheit as high uh, grade uh, fever. But overall, it is more mild, moderate, or severe coronavirus infection. Mm -hmm. When they are talking about mild infection, it means patients who have just upper respiratory tract <coughs> uh, mm -hmm. symptoms like fever or dry cough or sore throat. No generalized symptoms, no uh, evidence of dyspnea or breathlessness, no uh, difficulty in breathing, no chest pain. So if these symptoms are not there, then you are probably suffering from mild coronavirus, mild infection. Again, yeah. once the screening test has been done, then it can be conclusively proven whether you are actually suffering from coronavirus or this is a garden variety upper respiratory tract infection, any viral flu for that matter. Voice. Right. But I think the question is, uh, you know, can you really tell from what temperature you have or how high your temperature is or the specific nature of your cough that you have uh, COVID-19 symptoms? Uh, Dr. Surendra uh, Kumar, if you would like to respond to that. Yeah. Uh, during this uh, COVID infection, usually fever may or may not be there. But if patient is having persistent high grade fever in the range of more than 100 for lasting for a few days, then there is a high risk of, you can say, uh, for diagnosing these patients and we send them for testing. And cough is usually dry and they do have some other symptoms like sore throat and loss of sensation in uh, tongue. So they mm. don't uh, appreciate the, uh, you can say, taste. And sometimes they do have diarrhea also, headache, mm. body ache, are other uh, symptoms hmm. but uh, main symptoms are fever uh, dry cough and if the disease is extending then it may be breathlessness right thank Do you Do Do dr sharma though i mean i want to talk to you about your specialty really and 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 we do have a lot of questions coming in from diabetics because they see themselves at high risk so um you know what is it that diabetics should be doing in this situation should they still be monitoring their glucose levels every day should they be following the diets they continue to do many of them are prescribed a minimum half hour walk every day to control their blood sugar levels so it really is quite difficult under a lockdown to do all of that yeah absolutely right uh, diabetic patients we always prescribe exercises walking etc but they can't go out so for that either if they have a trade meal or they have their gym in house they should use it otherwise simple walking and doing yoga exercises stretching exercises will be helpful going up and down your stairs is also helpful uh, exercise is an important part so they should not avoid it secondly they should monitor their blood sugar more frequently mm -hmm. so that they know that their sugars are well controlled and of course as rightly highlighted by my previous speaker, that they should take care of their diet because they are at home and not doing any activity. Mm -hmm. uh, the second thing after television is eating something. So right. uh, we should be very careful what we are eating yeah. and we should be taking more of our salads, fruits and vegetables rather than fried food. All right. So, Thank Dr. You. Sharma, that's an interesting point that you raise because we've had a lot of doctors on the show who have advised against eating raw vegetables or raw fruits in any way. So, and they, and they say that there could be a, a, a chance that droplets could sort of remain on, on fruit and vegetable surfaces for a while. So, would you say that it's advisable to eat yeah. salad? Yeah, that is an important point. So, whenever you are brought, uh, bringing in anything from a uh, market, First thing is you properly wash it with soap and water and keep them in a soap water for some sufficient time. Right. And then, of course, you can uh, remove all these bacteria which are lying on uh, this virus, which are lying on these uh, vegetables and fruits. And then you can use it without any fear. 
All right. I'd like to appeal to all our callers who are tuning into this show. If you have questions specifically on uh, diabetes and hypertension as uh, conditions that you already have, then do please call in and use this opportunity to ask these experts on specifically what you ought to be doing if you have these underlying conditions already. Uh, but of course, we're taking your questions on a range of subjects. Uh, Lakshmi Narayan is with us from Vizag this morning. Uh, Lakshmi Narayan, go ahead. Uh, good morning, sir. I, I am not a diabetic. I am 82 years old. Mm -hmm. I have been taking hot milk with sugar twice a day, morning, evening, uh, before going to bed. Is it okay, sir? All right. Whoever would like to take that? Uh, uh, I don't think there should be a problem there. If you are not a diabetic, then consuming milk does not cause any problems. But as the previous speaker said, you should uh, keep in check the amount of calories that you are taking in. Overall, milk consumption helps in a number of ways. Uh, most of the Indian population being vegetarian, the major source of protein for us is milk and dairy products. So a non-diabetic patient consuming even four to five spoons of sugar throughout the day would not cause any issues uh, related to diabetes per se. Okay, before I take the next uh, caller, uh, I'm going to ask Dr. Godapati about, uh, you know, those with underlying heart conditions. Um, should they be continuing with existing heart medication, even if they're, for instance, diagnosed with COVID-19 symptoms? Yeah, definitely. They should continue the medications which, are, uh, which they are already on. Uh, only thing in uh, some individuals who contract this uh, COVID disease, they can have fluctuations of blood pressure especially if in severe form of uh, coronavirus disease, they can be lowering of blood pressure, uh, in which case the doctors who is uh, treating uh, the patient, uh, they will adjust the dosages of the medications. But otherwise, people who have mild symptoms, uh, they should continue to take uh, their uh, medications regularly. There were some concerns expressed yeah. about the use of some of the BP medications uh, like uh, AC inhibitors or angiotensin receptor blockers mm -hmm. uh, that these medications will increase the risk of uh, having uh, uh, getting the corona, uh, coronavirus disease. But however, uh, as of now, the data is not sufficient and mm. it is safe to use these medications in, uh, uh, in patients with uh, hypertension. So American Heart Association, European Society of Cardiology, uh, as of now, uh, they recommend that we should continue to use the same uh, medications which the patient is already on. All right. Dr. Sharma, um, you know, for diabetes, yeah. would you say the same thing really or for that matter, any other uh, sort of existing condition? Uh, do you keep taking the medication uh, even if you develop COVID-19 symptoms? Most diabetic patients well, uh, uh, can continue. Uh, diabetic patients uh, are more prone for coronavirus because they are uncontrolled and their uh, capacity to fight infections are reduced. If they are well controlled, then probably there is no problem. The other important point is that diabetic patients are suffering from other comorbidities like kidney problem and like heart problem, hypertension, obesity, etc. So these uh, additional comorbidities are making our patients of diabetes more prone for development of COVID-19 as well as more chances of developing severe disease. And that's why if they are taking care of their diabetes, taking care of their blood pressure and taking drugs normally and regularly and remaining in touch with a physician who is taking care of their uh, problem right from the beginning, then I don't think there will be any problem. All right. Dr. Bharat Sharma, anything that you'd like to add to that? Um, as far as the medicines for diabetes are concerned, more, most medicines are allowed throughout uh, this pandemic. Yeah. But if a patient actually uh, develops a COVID-19 infection and gets hospitalized for the same, then most of the oral medicines that are used for diabetes might be stopped and uh, the patient might need to move on to insulin. Another important factor for patients who are already taking insulin uh, for their diabetes is that yeah. they need to maintain adequate levels of hydration and obviously control their calorie intake. Even during episodes of fever or when the patient's oral intake is not that good, there is a myth that if you don't eat, you don't need insulin. That is not actually the case. In cases of infection or fever, the body's requirement for insulin actually goes up. So the patients who are on insulin, especially the type 1 diabetic patients, should not stop taking their insulin even if they are febrile or even if their oral intake has gone down. Right. Obviously, they should consult their treating diabetologist or endocrinologist during this period. All right. Do Dr. Surendra Sharma has uh, a point to yeah. make as well. Yeah. Many a time people are 
prescribing hydroxy uh, chloroquine yeah and yeah. this is also a anti diabetic drug it reduces right. blood sugar to some extent to a tune of hva1c of 0.5% or so so if somebody is on this drug then probably you may require reduction of other anti diabetic drugs for example doses of insulin or other anti diabetic drugs all right let's take a, a caller at at this point we have uh, prachi calling in from new mumbai um, prachi what's your question yes good morning everyone my question is if it sometimes suffocates when we using regular cotton mask for a long time in such case if we use natural scissor patch to cover nostril is it recommended and cover our mouth part with cotton mask and my next question is if we don't have sanitizer can we use liquid soap to dry clean our hands All right. Uh, she's asking about uh, filter nose packs, I believe. So uh, those are normally used as uh, devices for sort of pollution filters, certainly. But do they help uh, in a, in a situation where you're trying to protect yourself from a virus, or is a face mask the only thing that's recommended? Uh, if Dr. Gudapati would like to take that. Yeah, as of now, uh, there's no recommendation on using the alternatives to the face mask. Yeah. It's only the face mask which has been recommended. The different types of face masks uh, which are uh, available: uh, uh, the surgical mask, the N95 mask, and the simple homemade uh, cloth mask. So, whatever is available to the general public, they can use it. But as of now, it's the face mask which is what is uh, recommended. And uh, the second question: uh, It's not necessary that only a sanitizer has to be used. Right. Simple soap and uh, hand wash is good enough. In case if you are going out and then you don't have a, uh, access to the soap and uh, running water, that's when a sanitizer uh, can be used. Ravi Kumar from Bengaluru is with us and also has a question on masks. Ravi, go ahead. Yeah. Good morning, NDTV. I'm proud to be a viewer of NDTV. Good morning, doctor. Thank you very much. And uh, regarding N95 mask, what is the life of a N95 mask? Because I have a mask I've been using for more than a week. Does it lose its uh, character after a week, or should I replace it? Under what interval should I replace it? So okay. the recommendation is that uh, the N95 mask should be used for around eight hours. It's a single-use mask, and it's generally used for around uh, eight hours. So beyond that, if you use for a longer time, or if you continue to, you know, re, re sterilize it and use it, we don't know how well uh, it works. But in several countries, there is a shortage of uh, this N95 mask. So some of the doctors, uh, they have been given, like even All India Institute has given a new directive now, uh, because there is some shortage of N95 mask uh, for the doctors all over the country. Uh, they are giving five masks, and uh, then what is recommended is that you use one mask in one day. and then uh, put it uh, let it dry for the next 4 days and then use it on the 5th uh, day so sim similarly the next day the next mask is used which is again used on the 6th day so this kind of practice has been going on in some of the uh, countries uh, because of the shortage of n95 mask but uh, generally there is no data on uh, uh, how well it will work after beyond the usage of uh, uh, the mask for one day but what is more important is the general public doesn't need n95 mask Right. And 95 masks are reserved for professionals, medical professionals who are dealing with corona positive cases, and mm. that too where there is a high risk of generating uh, aerosols. So, so like just patients a cover, a cover for the face, Dr. Gudapati would be enough, and this could be a piece of a clean, sanitized piece of cloth yeah. also. Yeah, ideally, a surgical mask if it is available, simple surgical mask. But yeah. simple surgical mask may not be available for the general public always. Yeah. So in this case, a simple uh, cloth made mask also is good enough. So something to uh, cover your face yeah. and the nose, so that you don't infect the others. Yeah, Dr. Bharat um, Sharma also has a point. Yeah. Yes, go uh, ahead. There are certain guidelines issued by the CDC as well as by our own uh, medical authorities mm -hmm. about how to make a cloth mask at home, and there are excellent videos available, authenticated videos, right. uh, which help us in uh, making cloth masks at home. And as Dr. Budapati uh, earlier said. there is a serious scarcity of n95 masks and masks and even the routine surgical masks are not easily available for everybody so any person who is not in contact with a covid-19 patient who is not symptomatic can use a home made cloth mask and as i said the guide, uh, the instructions for making that are easily available online all right one more caller uh, we have joe from mumbai with us on the phone line joe good morning what's your question good morning uh my question is that uh, see the people who have been cured of coronavirus i mean they might yeah. be having antibodies in them right 
Yeah. So, uh, uh, so is it possible that you can uh, kind of uh, uh, transfuse that blood? Yeah. Uh, you know, into a person who's sick, yeah. or use it as an antidote, uh, use it as a vaccine or something. Uh, is it possible that can be done? Yeah, okay. it is being tried out. Um, actually, it is not like a vaccine, but those individuals who have coronavirus disease, which is in a very severe form, and if they're not doing well, uh, it is being tried out uh, uh, like those individuals who already had an infection with antibodies, those antibodies are being extracted and uh, they can be tried. But we don't have enough data to say how well it works, but certainly this is a modality which is being tried out in severe forms of uh, coronary vi coronavirus infection uh, in right. the uh, ICU. Okay, we have uh, 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 um, Amarjeet Kaur with us from Noida this morning. Uh, Amarjeet Kaur, uh, go ahead. All right, I believe we don't have uh, the caller, but uh, Satish is with us from uh, Kanchipuram. Satish, what's your question? Uh, um, uh, my question, first question is, uh, what is the chance of uh, if a patient is COVID positive, will it, is it, will it get, uh, will it become positive again? What is the percentage of patients will become oh, positive? Oh, so I, again? you're asking once again about uh, getting the virus again yeah. after uh, recovery. Okay, the it's the infection is their first question. And uh, what is the cardiology point of view with the patient? Then again, and one outbreak occurs in India. If a person wants to take hydroxychloroquine, what is the cardiology opinion will, will you need to get? And then we need to uh, take uh, hydroxychloroquine or straight away they can take hydroxychloroquine or it is not recommended okay. in India. Okay. Uh, so, uh, coming to the, yeah, the, the, the first question regarding reinfection. Normally, if some individual gets a virus infection and then they develop antibodies, there is generally protection against reinfection from the virus. Uh, so, by and large, reinfection chances are very low and the immunity is likely to last for some time. But however, there are some cases who have been reported all over the world where the patient after contracting the virus infection tests negative for the virus, but few days or few weeks later, uh, they have again uh, uh, tested positive. So there are two explanations which are given for that. One is that sometimes after the patient uh, is treated for the coronavirus infection, the virus load will go down. Right. So when they test at the end of the treatment, it may turn out that the uh, virus test is negative and we have declared the patient to be cleared of the virus. But however, in subsequent tests, it may turn out to be positive. So it is not actually a reinfection but it's just the persistence of the infection. That is one thing. But however, there is a, a very few cases which have been described where even after uh, the disease uh, goes and then the patient is negative, after a few days or a few weeks, the same patient gets again the symptoms of uh, coronavirus along with testing uh, positive for the virus. So this has also been described in a very small number of uh, patients. So we still need more data to say uh, whether or not uh, patients get, uh, re can get reinfected. Right. But generally, by and large, they are immune to the, uh, the reinfection. To also, also, Dr. That's Gudapati, on the question on hydro hydroxychloroquine, especially for people who are already on heart medication and, and whether there's yes. a recommendation at all for taking hydroxychloroquine. Queen in, in such a situation. Yeah, see, the whole uh, this uh, pandemic of uh, uh, coronavirus disease is only for the last two months. So there have been several uh, medications which been which have been tried out, out of which hydroxychloroquine is one of them. The way it is thought it will work is that it will prevent the entry of the virus into the cell and thus can prevent infection or treat the uh, infection. But however, hydroxychloroquine has got significant effect on the heart. Uh, in several individuals, there can be prolongation of the QT interval which can predispose to uh, sudden uh, arrhythmias, like uh, very fast heartbeats, or sometimes the heart can stop producing life-threatening problems. So hydroxychloroquine should be used only in coronavirus patients uh, with severe form of uh, uh, coronavirus disease, and that too under medical observation. Right. And the second indication is for the immediate contacts of patients uh, who, who, who have uh, uh, coronavirus. That means immediate family members and individuals who are exposed uh, closely to this patient. Apart from these two subset of patients, uh, uh, hydroxychloroquine should not be used uh, as a routine on a community basis uh, to prevent the uh, infection. All right. Uh, we are completely out of time this morning, so I'd like to thank all of you very much indeed for uh, yeah. joining us this morning to take questions from our viewers as well as uh, give specific information to those with comorbidities, as they are called, and underlying conditions that could impact 
uh, uh, in a way, in a negative way, in case they contract COVID-19 cases. We'll be here every morning at this time to take your questions and calls. Thanks for watching.